Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 277. I am your host, Keith Andrew. Along here is Caitlin Wells, the beautiful and talented Caitlin Wells. And I just want to Kathleen. Say, Kathleen, Caitlin Wells. Yeah, I keep, it's, it's been a long day. But. Yeah, of course. Kathleen Wells, no worries. No worries. Well, what did, what did I say? What was that? That's what I said to Kathleen. Exactly. <laughs> 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 hey, anyway, make, make every interview more fun and different. Like I said, it's been a long day. I can tell you about it, but I won't mention the job. But it's retail. <clears throat> but starting off, you know, it's a half hour of your time. We can go a little bit longer if needed. But starting off, what can you tell us? Oh, wait. I forgot my catchphrase. <laughs> like I said, it's <laughs> one of those days. The whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still overcome controversy and reach my goals in life. At the same time, I'm able to turn myself into a perfect example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities. But you should never give up. It is to prove to people you can stem out to something. With that being said, half hour of your time. And starting off, what can you tell us about yourself? Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's see about me here. Uh, I I'm a I'm a New York actor, writer, director, producer. Um, but because I I've done some some producing, I really shouldn't give myself that title uh, unless I'm speaking particularly about uh, theater because uh, I produced some of my own one act plays on off Broadway. Uh, venues here in the city. So, so as a producer, um, I've done theater. Um, but as far as acting and directing and writing, um, currently I am working on, a, on a, my first uh, short film as a director um, and looking forward to that. But, I, I, but I, the role that I love most would, would have to be as an actor. So I'm an actor of film, uh, television, and theater, um, and I've also worked in, uh, I'm sorry, I've worked, <laughs> I've worked, <laughs> it's one of those days, yeah, it's totally one of those days, I'm sorry, I got thrown off by a bus going by you, uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm your, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm a New York actor, I, I'm a writer, I'm an art director, I've uh, produced a couple of my own one-act showcases where I've written some one-act plays, uh, where I performed and directed and produced them here at off Broadway venues. Um, the last few years, I've been working primarily in film, shorts, full features, a few TV shows. I've done. I've had a few principal roles in um, a few TV series, and and right now I'm I'm working on putting my first short film out as a as a female director that I'm going to uh, hope to put out by uh, the end of next year, 2017. So I wear all the hats, but what I love to do, I guess my favorite role is, is as an actor. You know, that, that's what I love, and uh, it's my passion, and uh, this, is, this is what I do um, as an artist. Um, alongside that, I, I'm, a, I'm a very, very blessed um, mother of a, of a gorgeous 10-year-old son whose name is Nicholas. And so uh, he is my pride and joy. So I, I think uh, other, uh, he, he comes first. He's my, the love of my life. But uh, um, when I'm not with him, I'm, I'm definitely acting and performing in the arts. No, absolutely. Have you ever performed voiceover acting before? Oh, uh, yes. It's funny you, you said that. I, uh, I have done several voiceovers for a few commercials, uh, infomercials. Um, and I actually am a coach for uh, voiceover artists. Um, I have a wonderful uh, client, Michael Dragnetti, who is uh, putting it out there. Very, very strong. Very, very good, good, good voiceover artist. So I do coach um, voiceover artists. I, I don't. I'm not a vocal coach per se, but I, I, I coach vo uh, voiceover artists, and I also coach attorneys and other uh, professionals um, in, in many different. Um, you know, in many different backgrounds that need help to, to, you know, to, that have, that sort of need help to, to 
to stand up in front of people when they're doing public speaking, whether it's in a courtroom or on any 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 other platform. I've had a few attorney clients that need just a little help in, in with their you know building their confidence with their vocals. So a vocal coach I've become, but I have uh, a few of my own voiceovers out there as well. So, yeah. Well, I, do, I do a lot of fan-made parodies for fun. Maybe you would like to do some. I'm sorry? Well, I do a lot of fan-made parodies for fun. Maybe you would like to do some. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I do. I've been told I have a strong voice, and I think that is one of my... Whoops, where am I? There I am. Sorry. <laughs> I have an, one of my strong assets is my voice, and I would love to do that. And Anything I could offer would be, would be great. And voiceover work is so much fun. You know, you don't have to, it's, it's more or less, it's about your voice doing all of the acting. You don't have to worry so much what you look like because it's your voice. But your voice is equally as important because, um, anyway, I have a huge respect for the industry and I have a huge respect for voiceover artists. So I would love to be, uh, be a voiceover artist in any way that you, that you need. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, and then now two questions on that subject. Is now the first one I was gonna ask you was um hmm, actually I, I, I oh yeah I just like said one of those days uh, the first thing I was gonna ask you was um I would love to take you up on an offer on uh if you can coach me you know I when I started my talk show I do I have horrible people skills so I used to hesitate. And I talk to people one on one, so now, and now I can't shut up because I'm used to it. So basically, you know, 2013 I was basically one on one. Then 14, 15 I started to do two interviews and double interviews. Now I want to do group interviews so I feel comfortable talking to a group of people. But if you can help me get up or give me some pointers on being a public speaker, I would love that. Oh, of course. I mean, you, you are very well spoken. I hear you now. However, I, I'm, I'm very, 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 very open and here for you. I always say this for people that need it. And, and, and I always work this way. I always tell people, you know, um, I get to know them first, you know, as a person. And then through that, I learned their voice. I mean, I can hear you now. You're very well spoken and articulate, but that doesn't really tell me who you are. So the more I get to know you as a person, the more I'll be able to help you uh, be able to be comfortable in your own shoes, in your own skin, in your own voice. And, and it's really, really important to be comfortable with your own voice. So I'd love to help you. I, I, I love helping people in general. I love to talk to people and, you know, it's all for me. It's not about getting the, you know, making a very drawn out process. It's about just getting to know someone, seeing things, getting to know them, and seeing things very quickly, and just jumping in there and explaining to them. Look, very simply, very quickly. This is what you sh you know you can try. I suggest things. I could suggest a couple of things to you that will help you as you progress in your talk show and in life, um, more or less. What I what I like to, to help people with is to be comfortable on any platform, not just in front of the camera, not just in front of the mic, but in life in general, because your voice tells you a lot about a person. So if you're as comfortable in front of the mic as you are when you're, you know, talking to the guy down the street, you know, at the dry cleaners or at the grocery store, it's still the same voice, same, same person. So I really like to help people just to feel comfortable in that. And, and I'm really good at, I could definitely, I would love to help you, of course, but I would, I, I can probably when I get to know you better help you to feel more comfortable in your overall life experiences because again your voice tells you everything about a person your voice tells you everything about a person you can look good but your voice tells you if you're nervous your voice tells you if you're happy your voice tells you if you are sad you know I mean it's very hard to to uh to hide the voice so absolutely yeah well, the other question I was going to ask you is, how come you keep hiding the camera? I know. I'm sorry. I keep doing that, trying to get in focus here. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> here I am. Yeah. But, um, but no, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I really applaud what you do. 
you feel that you, you seem very comfortable. But again, there's always somebody out there who can give somebody a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a coaching to help you. Um, to, I could help you see something in yourself that you don't necessarily see that could help you, you know, uh, as you go forward. Likewise, you know, it's, it's a learning process for everyone. You know, anytime you sit down with someone and talk to someone, you're going to learn a lot about yourself and that person, you know. So, um, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to pass the show over to you. Actually, before I pass the show over to you, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Now I'm holding up my bus so I know where to edit it. <laughs> So the first thing I want to promote, and you're definitely a perfect candidate for this, and I'm on there. So the first thing I want to promote is CelebrityVM.com. For people who want to know what CelebrityVM.com is, it's basically, i give you a perfect example. You come across my profile and do a little plug for myself, I'm on there. And for twenty dollars, I get to say anything you want. He's like, "Hey, today's my son's birthday. He likes it. Yeah, impressions that you do, or my husband's game, um, and his retirement gift, or <laughs> whatever you want to say. And are you renewing your wedding vows? Or what? Well, basically, as long as it's not perverted, I get to say whatever you want for twenty dollars." But if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, House of Cards, WWE, TNA, any famous person you want, go to CelebrityVM.com and you can get the celebrity to get you a recommendation or a shout out. It's really nice. And the next thing I want to promote is two things in one. It's called uh, Wood Quakes for people who like collecting animes or animations, um, t-shirts, it's about $14 a month, it's an ongoing fee, and they have different boxes, different themes, that's replay.com, and the last thing that's got access, do you, have, do you own a dog? That is a classic, do you own a dog? How, what was the last word that you said, I'm sorry? Oh, do you have a dog? Do I have a dog? No, I would love to have a dog. I have a fish. That's about all I can handle at the moment. <laughs> but I, but my future goals, thank you for asking, is to to get my son a dog. He's ten, so I'm thinking in the next few years if I can get an apartment. Right. That's that's that because again I'm thinking about the dog. You know, it's sad to have a small little apartment with a dog who wants to run around. It has to be the right dog, the right size apartment here in the city. Uh because we live in uh, Upper Manhattan, I, I I am planning on getting a dog. Planning on it. The reason I didn't bring it up is I don't think there's one for fish, but maybe I know there's <laughs> plenty of fish. <laughs> okay. But okay. it's called BarkBox.com. And BarkBox is the same thing as Wukwaits. Um, I can't remember the price, but I think it's like $14 a month. All of it is like the same thing, like $7 a month, $10 a month, $14 a month. And it's basically an ongoing thing, and you receive packages in the mail. And for BarkBox, you get a dog toy, dog treats, food, and accessory. It's really nice. Nice, nice. And also, I'm going to have some uh, Target who, um, little buffets in there as well you can check out. And now, going back to the show... I'm going to pass it over to you. Was there anything you wanted to talk about? Anything you want to ask me? This is your time after all. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, for me, I mean, I'm really, really, um, I really appreciate, you know, taking the time and, and asking me to come on your talk show because for me, I, you know, I take this very seriously. Um, I think for me right now, I'm just feeling really strong as a woman you know, I'm um, really, really excited about the, the new initiative that the city is going to launch next year um, that's going to offer about $5 million to women uh, filmmakers. So I'm seeing there's like a shift now. There's, there's a lot of support. Um, so anyone out there listening who's a woman who's, who's in the arts, I really strongly you know, recommend to keep going strong because there's so much that we can do. Our voice is so important to be heard whether you know it's as an actor i love to act as an actor i love to get strong roles 
any role that's a, that's part of a great project I'm you know I'd love to be a part of and I'm really interested in being a part of but then I also write my own work get my own voice out there you know write my plays get my plays up on on, on stage and uh, you know get actors out there to, to tell my story you know my, my vision so so again there's another platform and then TV you know and film um, now as a filmmaker I'm diving in you know, I'm diving in. I have no idea what's going to happen, but as a director um, of film, it's my first film that, I, that I'm looking to do. I'm, I'm really excited to collaborate with cinematographers and, and, and producers and, and, and other filmmakers because it's, it's all new for me um, in this, wearing this hat. And as a woman, it's, it's very, I feel very blessed to be, to be able to do that now because I see there's going to be more and more support, you know, as long as we stay strong. Um, and we, we, you know, we really, really, you know, stay strong, you know, there, there's so much more to do out there as, as a woman artist than just being a pretty face up on the screen. There's so much more to do than that. There, there's just so, so much more to do, whether we're writing the script, directing the script. Um, I was working on a deuce. I don't know if I, I should say this or not. It's coming out next, next, uh, next year on, uh, HBO. And i um, really, really excited to see a female director watch her work on set. So, so I'm really excited to be, to be, you know, be able to, to, to be doing what I do now and seeing, seeing there's a lot more support now and, and making, making things happen and not settling for anything less, you know, any, any small roles or just, you know, roles that, 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 you know, put us up there and, uh, make us look good because we look good. It, there's so much more to us than just looking good. So I'm really, really, really proud to be a, a female artist right now in, 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 uh, in the entertainment industry. And uh, I guess if anyone heard this, even if it's one person that, uh, that you know, needed a little push tonight, a little shove or, or a little support, a little pat on the back, that, that, that's what I, my intention is to do, is to just keep, you know, keep them keep them going strong, keep, keep women going strong, keep everyone going strong. You know, it's a collaboration. Uh, many days, you know, if you want to throw your hands up in the air and give up, there's just no option, you, you, you know? And age is irrelevant. Age is irrelevant, no matter how old you are. You want to be in this industry, you got to work hard for it. You, you cannot give up. You got to be hungry. Stay hungry, you know? Do what you got to do to make that money. But never give up your dreams because you can do it and you will do it. And if you have to do a parallel to, to doing everything else in your life, you'll do it. You know, I'm raising my son and uh, did many day jobs, still doing day jobs. But never, ever, ever once did I ever say I'm going to give up. And I think one day I did mention giving up. My son looked at me and said, what are you kidding me? You can't give up. You're my mom. You, you know, he's proud. Actually, my son's proud to, to tell people that I'm an actor. Um, and the fact that he can Google me online and show people that he's not joking, that I am a, I, I am a serious actor, it makes me feel good. Because uh, as long as you believe in yourself, everyone else will. So I'm really, really happy that you gave me this platform tonight. And uh, no matter what background you are, um, you mentioned disability. You know, the only disability is not believing in yourself. That's a huge disability. Other than that, I don't believe there is any disability that can't be overcome, you know? You, you believe in yourself, whatever, everybody's got a problem. Everybody's got something. Everybody look, looks maybe good on the outside, but nobody really knows what's going on inside or wh how, how much of a struggle it took that person to get where they are. So, you know, the past, you never look back. As, as I say, everyone says it's a cliche, you never look back. But you know what? The, your history is a lot of who you are. So never forget it, but also never let anything limit you. You know, the only thing that's going to limit you is you not believing in yourself, you know, and you're going to meet supportive people and you're going to meet people that aren't supportive. Nothing matters as long as you believe in yourself. So I think when you mention, you know, there, disability is, is what it is, but it doesn't mean anything really if you believe in yourself and people will honor that. People will applaud that people will admire that and respect that you know because you believe in yourself that's all it takes there's so many people that walk around not half as half as confident in themselves as as they should be and then there's people that have confidence when they never really 
shouldn't say this. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything negative, but maybe you didn't earn it. You know, I think you do need to earn it. You know, you take a you take a negative and you turn it into a positive. You know, it's it's not a happy-go-lucky world. It's a tough world in a sense where you've got to own who you are and and admit. I mean, embrace who you are. You you have something going on with yourself. Okay, we all do. Whether it's a disability, whether it's a it's something that you you know you have no control over, or whether it's something you did to yourself, get over it, move forward, turn it into a positive. Because uh, it's it's again cliche, but it is a journey. We're all on this journey in life, and you never give up. You can't. You know, you really can't. I love your dog. I don't. <laughs> I see your dog. Yeah, see, see. Right. Is it a boy or a girl? Oh, well, it's a girl. Her name is La Fifi. Fifi? I love it. Hi, Fifi. It's, it's a poodle, right? Yep. She's a... Oh. Um, I think she, uh, she's not a tiny one. She's like, um, I guess, miniature. Okay, so she's calm, sort of like a lap dog-ish? Or yeah, no? Well, she is a lap dog, but she is nuts. <laughs> okay. All right. Well... A good nut, some hope. Yeah, a good nut. <laughs> well, I remember, here's a funny story for you. We took her around the lake, and uh, she was barking at everything, barking at the ducks, barking at the cars. She even barked at, at a baby, and it's like, what is wrong with you? And the baby started to cry. And she, Fifi, ran behind my sister and started to shake. It's like, really? <laughs> Aww. But I was going to ask you um, two things. Um, did he ever, um, first question is, did he ever work in, uh, I can't even get my words here for one of those good days. Uh, okay. First question is, have you ever been to Woodbury Commons? And the second one is, have you ever worked in retail? Huh. Okay, uh, I have been, I, I did go to Woodbury Commons. I never went inside. I was kind of taken there on a tour, like, oh, here's Woodbury Commons. And I'm like, really? Out in the middle of nowhere, this little miniature kind of village. Um, <laughs> I was very impressed, very kind of, it was surreal for me to, to actually be out there. But I, So the answer to your question is, yes, but I did not shop there. Um, so, And the second question is I have worked in retail. And I will tell you, very honestly, that I'm horrible at retail. I'm not bad at selling something that I believe in. I'm actually very good at it. But for retail, it takes a certain type of person. It takes that communication with uh, the consumer that I was too honest for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just never had much success in retail. I sold cosmetics, several different, um, you know, Estee Lauder, Clinique, same company, I think. So, uh, and then a uh, bath and body shop, I think is the other one. I, I so I've worked in several, you know, oh, Aveda. I've sold Aveda. So I've worked for cosmetics companies in retail, but I just, I don't know, too honest. You know, it's, it, and we tell the consumer, you know, this don't get this product. Go next door, get this one. It's better. I'm not just, I'm just, you know, I was clueless with it. I just couldn't. I was too honest. I think that was my. I think that was my biggest problem in retail. So never, never was very good at it, at all. I remember. Um, let's see. What stores did I work in? Well, I won't mention where I'm at now. I can tell you off the air. But I worked over at North Face. I worked over at Kiwi Toys, Skechers, and uh, recently Target. And this woman was buying a TV, a, a, a Visa. What, what was it? Um, it's something with a V. Um, <laughs> I, I can't think of the name. And I basically said, don't get it. You're going to regret it. And basically, and she said, oh, why are you say that? I told her the story. We got it in Best Buy. And they said, well, it's a 65-inch TV. Well, we have to um, basically had like a mark on the side. Like how you look at me by the mark in the screen. Well, you know, to the warranty doesn't really cover it, and to uh, get a brand new panel, and we have to take off the front of the TV, and it'd be over, 
six hundred dollars or six thousand dollars, something in the thousands, and they're like, you know, for that amount of money, you can just go out and buy a new freaking TV. Yeah. So right. when she was getting, I can't think of the name for some reason. I have like a brain block. And it was sources of Vegas up, and it's it's really shitty, but it's like don't get it. So I say recommend a Sony. I re I recommend a Samsung, because those are really good. Or Sharp, Sharp is really good. But you know the store I work in now, it's nice. You know the guy is really nice. He gave me the job. He didn't have to. He um. Basically, you know, today we had the CEO and the COO come in on the company, and everyone was calling out, and everyone didn't want to be there, and deals it. And I was leaving, and I said, you know what? You gotta owe me one. I didn't say it to him on spider my web, but I said, you know what? You gotta owe me one, because I stayed extra, stayed until 6, so I did a 7.40. A.M. to a 6 p.m. And, you know, I, I kind of eavesdropped around the comedies and was cleaning out the sneakers, but I was still in, in, in doing the head to ins and around the, uh, the little banquet thing. So it's kind of like, we're trying to eavesdrop on what they're saying. And, you know, it's interesting, but I felt obligated because... You know, if it wasn't for him, I probably be, wouldn't be working at the job. Uh, I'm only staying because, you know, he gave me the job and he's, he's still there. And it's basically just, you know, I, it's one of those things where you felt like you needed to be there. Like you had, mm. to, you had to get back. Nice. So you, you're okay with, with your job for now? Like, in other words, you don't hate your job because it's awful when you have to go to work every day not liking where you are. You're you're okay with it, in other words. It's not what you probably want to do with your life maybe in the future, but you're you're able to handle it because you're comfortable there because uh, that's important. You know, if, if so many people don't like their jobs at all. Like, they go to work and they're built. Okay, <laughs> I'm fine. I, we won't say anything about that. I, I got you. But, um, yeah, that, that's better than most. Let's put it this way. Yeah. So many people. Yeah, you, you, I mean, they have ailments. They're at the doctors all the time. They, they're just miserable, miserable because they're really not happy doing what they're doing. And I think you've got to reach a point in your life where you're, if that's where you're at and you're losing sleep over it and you're not healthy, you need to, you need to do something else, anything else. And so many people do, are not willing to, to branch out of that. They get comfortable. They get there, there's a lot of fear with that, you know, depending on where you're at in life. So I'm glad to hear that at least you're able to get up in the morning <laughs> and do and go do what you have to do. You know, it's half the battle already, you know. No, absolutely. And one reason I do want to work is one in my talk show helps me interact with people. So now I like interacting with people. And it's basically, I, my talk show is my main goal. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, until I die. People don't have to like it, but this is what I want to do. And I'm not kissing anyone's ass. And I need the money to pay off my bills. And maybe we can definitely hang out in the city one day once I pay off my bill. I can take my like, Uber to go to the city or something. But I'm paying off my credit card because I want to be interviewed in person. I was interviewed over the phone and over Skype, but I do want to go to the city. I want to be interviewed on Fox News, CNN, and Good Morning America. All these things, but I need to pay off my credit card so I can job back to work for that. But, you know, we, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up. Um, I'm gonna pass you the show, pass over the show. But before you say your piece, I want to ask one final question to you. Go on, you know, I do the hand gesture, I like Bill O'Reilly, so the spin stops here. So going on the record, I would like to know, and our listeners, when I first approached you, what made you say yes to be a guest on my talk show? How do you feel about being a guest 
<laughs> One, what was your first reaction after being interviewed? Do you have the same reaction or do you feel differently? Okay, I caught the end of it, I think. You're asking me what my reaction is after the interview as opposed to what I initially thought going into the interview? Yes. Is that what was the question? That yes, was a question, going on right? on the record. Okay. So, if, uh, you, you are such a personable person. I'll tell you that right now. And again, this, this is like really, really on the fly, really, really just meeting you now. On record, I will say that there was no prep work. I never met you prior to this interview. You're such a wonderful person. I never do this. I never feel comfortable doing interviews. I'll be quite honest with you because people are listening to me. I don't know how many, but, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all important to, to sound like when people, when you have something to say, whether you do or not, you know, you say it. And, I, and the worst, my, worst thing I hate to do is listen to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about or <laughs> they're just, you know, they're just making up stuff as they go along. And for me, I, I'm, very, I'm a very thorough person. So I, for me to do an interview... I, I like to be prepared, but a lot of times interviews are on, you know, on the spot. So I'm always a little uncomfortable with interviews. So I always want to sound like I, you know, sound articulate, sound intelligent. I want to, I'll be honest, I want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. So people hear me, they say, oh, she, she's good. She's not a, she's not a weirdo. She's not everybody, you know, I don't, I'll be quite candid with you. I don't, I don't want people to look at me like, like I'm some kind of joke. So with that said, not knowing you, I took, it wasn't even a risk. It was a feeling. I said to myself, he's a good guy. He's got a great cause. And you do. And so I said, okay, I'll do the interview. And so being in your talk show for me is a, is a wonderful, wonderful experience. And that's on record because it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience getting, you know, it was a wonderful experience being on, getting to talk about myself, but also getting to know you. I think what you're doing is fantastic. I support it 100%. Um, thank you again for having me on. And I wish you all the best with it. And I wish you all the luck in the world. It's, it's, it, and again, it was just an instinct for me to be on this show with you because you are a personable person. And, and it's not easy to, to, to pull off if it's, if it's not genuine. And I knew from the beginning that you were a genuine person. So that's why I'm here tonight talking to you. So thank you again. No, absolutely. Now stay tuned. I have a couple questions for you off the air. By wrapping up the interview, I just want to say it's a real honor and privilege to have you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to building a friendship with you as well. Great. Thank you, Keith.